Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Charlotte Ashman. Welcome to my channel where we discuss everything educational and inspirational. Now tonight, I am so pleased to uh, do a live uh, Facebook presentation for students preparing for the PEP exam. And um, what I would love to do is to show you two great resources that students can use to prep for this important examination. So um, you have this workbook that I've been using with my students. This is pep practice for grades four, five, and six students, and it's the quantitative reasoning. Now, the PEP exam is comprised of two main areas. You have the quantitative reasoning and you have verbal reasoning. So the quantitative reasoning, um, if you need help with that, this is a great tool to use. Then you have this workbook. This is uh, my first um, PEP book and it basically helps students to prep for the exam and it draws from all areas. So, you know, the ability test, you're basically um, sharpening students' critical thinking skills. So we use a number of approaches in this particular workbook to help students to prep for the exam. So we're talking about um, word patterning, sequences, categorization. We use spatial analysis. We use probabilities. We use estimations. We use opposites. We use similarities. A number of tools are used in this particular workbook to help students prep for that exam. And tonight, what I'm going to be doing, I'm actually going to be using some of the strategies from this workbook to help students prep for their exam. Now, there is another tool that I have that I'd love to introduce to students, and it is our verbal reasoning workbook. And this is only available online, so let me show you. Now, I'm already into the website, and our website is learninghub.online. So let me take you there. That's our website. And you'll notice that we have a number of resources that can help. So this aspect of the website is the teacher's area. So I'm going to click on library. And for the ability test, we have this workbook that I just showed to you, the general ability test workbook. The entire workbook is online. We're going to be using it in a second. And then we have the quantitative reasoning. That's the book that deals with the mathematical concepts. So we have that available. And this new book, it isn't published as yet. It's the verbal reasoning. And this takes care of all the um, aspects, all the skills that are necessary to help students with their verbal reasoning. So we're going to spend a little time tonight going through exercise one in this particular workbook. Now, if there are students on the live, I'm going to ask them to grab a copy of their book because we're going to be using it. So I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to just go and grab a copy of your pet practice for grades four, five, and six, your ability test workbook, because we're going to go through the entire exercise one tonight. All right, so I'm going to actually pull the book up online so I don't need my physical copy. So let me give you the full screen. All right, so you'll notice um, that I have the book here and I am going to go exercise one. Now, teachers, if you need to use these resources for the entire 2021, you can get uh, access to, to the Learning Hub and all the great resources that we have for absolutely free, no payments. That's just for teachers, all right? So for the remainder of 2021, if you need access to the website, all teachers need to do is just to send us a WhatsApp message, 876-351-7777, or you can call us, 926-1221. That's 876-926-1221, and you can get access to our resources to help you to help the students. All right. So on page one, we have, let me just zoom in a little bit. And you'll notice that we have... The question here 
asking students to guess what is missing or to tell what is missing from the third diagram. Let's call it the third diagram. Notice. When, a when you see something like this, students, what you are going to do, you're going to look to see if you see a pattern in terms of the object. You're going to look to see what pattern is there. How, do, how did they get the center number? Because in this particular question, we're asking you, what is missing from the center? So what you want to do, you want to take a minute and you want to look to see if you can figure out how we got the center number. Now, there are two ways to get the center number. I'm going to show you one. So all the students that are on the live, I want you to actually look and see if you can figure out how we got the center number. All right, so I'm gonna give you a couple seconds. All right, so let's see if you can figure that out. Hmm, I'm looking and I think I figured it out. So let's go. Now, notice something, notice something. We're trying to figure out what is missing from here. So we must, in our explanation, whatever we figure out for this one must hold for this one and it also should hold for this one. So let's see if we can get that. All right, so my explanation, I'm looking and I'm seeing, I think I figured it out. So notice, if you subtract six from 10, right? So you're gonna subtract the two bottom numbers. So 10 minus six, you're going to get four. And if you subtract the top number from what you get down here, you're gonna get the center number. So 10 minus six gives you four, and four minus four right here is gonna give you zero. Let's see if it holds for this. Nine minus three is gonna give you six, and six minus one is gonna give you five. So the number that is missing from here stands to reason it's gonna be seven minus three, that's gonna give you four, and four minus two, it's gonna give you two. All right, so I'm gonna select two and I got it correct. And you know, the beautiful thing with this interactive ebook that's on the Learning Hub is that you have the explanation in video format. So let me just play that for you. All right, so that was really, really, really awesome. I love that, right? Now, teachers, remember now, if you're doing your Zoom classes, if you're out of the classroom, this is the kind of thing that's going to stimulate your students. And let me just welcome all the students that I see online. Kyla Simpson, Melissa Foster, Sukin Scott, Andre Livingston, Nishir Jacobs, Dejane Williams, Sukin Scott, Carlene Moore, Michaela Henlon, Dejane Williams again, Colleen Webster, Kyla Simpson, Marsha McIntyre. And I see most of you got the answer correct. Nice, Sukin. And we have Damian Arnold. Yes, very nice. And um, thank you for joining students and your parents. I'm suspecting that some parents are here. So we're going to move on to question number two. Yes, Megan, good night. Sharona Lewis, thanks for joining. All right, let's move on to question number two. So. So we want to go back to our workbook. 
Yeah, we're going to go back to our workbook on the Learning Hub and we're going to pull up question number two. All right, so if you have your ability test workbook, you can pull it out and you can actually start working the questions with us. So there is question number two on the screen. I'm going to give you a little time to see if you can work this question out. And I'm going to take the answers on Facebook. I want to hear what you guys are saying. So let me just zoom in so you can see the question properly. It says, um, Victoria needs to buy five kilograms of bananas for a banana pudding. Her next door neighbor sells them for $50 per kilogram. At the nearest market in the next town, they are sold for $45 per kilogram. It costs $40 for a round trip on the bus to the market, which is a very long distance away. Should Victoria buy the bananas from her neighbor, or at the market. Okay, guys, I want to see what you say. This is your question. Is she going to buy the bananas at the market or from her neighbor? So let me read the answers that you guys are giving. Yes, um, Charlene, welcome. Plunkett, uh, Megan, welcome. All right, guys, come on. Come on, I want to see some of my students who are in my Zoom class, my free Zoom class at 5 o'clock. Come on, show up and show off. What should she do? Should she buy the bananas from her neighbor or should she buy them from the market? All right, I see Melissa Foster say neighbor. Patricia say neighbor. All right. Um, Kyla Simpson saying the answer is A, which is neighbor. Um, the neighbor, Damon Arnold saying the neighbor. All right, guys, Radisha Haven, neighbor, miss. Yes, Radisha, I hear you. I'm not saying yes to the answer, you know. I'm just listening to your, um, I'm just reading your answers. Oshea Scott says yes. Shanice Ford, hi. Hi, Shanice. All right, so I'm giving everybody else at least another um, two minutes. Okay, Nisha Ray says um, the market. All right, I wonder why. Ah, mm, Angus is saying, Megan Angus Hilton saying the neighbor. First Lady Brown Mackenzie saying the neighbor. Okay, neighbors, neighbors. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. 30 seconds more, work it out. And we'll discuss it. All right, so Pep is not going to have anything on us this year. We don't care about the pandemic. Well, we do care, but we don't care that the pandemic is here. It's not going to prevent us from getting properly prepared. That's what, you know, that's what I mean. So, I mean, we're going to be holding these live sessions and we're going to be going through um, performance tasks. We're going to go through ability tests. We're going to go through stuff because we're going to get prepared for our exams, okay? And, of course, um, my... my um, team when you step into that room or wherever it is held you should be saying hey what is this we've done this already we have covered all these concepts right so when you look at your quantitative reasoning aspect of your exam you should be ready to go when you look at your verbal reasoning, you should be like whoa what is this all right let's discuss this particular question let's see how we reason it out now, so it says Victoria needs to buy five kilograms of bananas for a banana pudding. Her next door neighbor sells them for $50 per kilogram. At the nearest market in the next town, they are sold for $45 per kilogram. It costs $40 for a round trip on the bus to the market, which is a very long distance away. So that suggests that she's going to have to take the bus. Should Victoria buy the bananas from her neighbor or at the market? So let, look, let's look at this. So she needs five kilograms of bananas. That's what she needs. So you can write down five kilograms. Her neighbor sells them for $50 per kilogram. So, I mean, if she needs five kilograms and they're being sold for $50 per kilogram, then that's an easy calculation because all you're going to do is to multiply five times 50 and you should get what you should get, right? So that looks like 250 to me. Now, at the nearest market in the next town, they're sold for $45 per kilogram. Now, I mean, if you just look at that um, from face value, you're going to think that, hey, it is cheaper at the market. Maybe she should buy from the market. But hey, 
she's gonna pay less for the bananas themselves because um she's paying 45 dollars times five while at the neighbor she's paying 50 dollars times five but look at the students you have to look at the other part of the question it says it costs 40 dollars for a round trip on the bus to the market which is a very long distance away now the fact that she has to pay 40 dollars to go to the market you're gonna have to add that in the cost so from face value you're going to see that the market is going to be more let's pull up the explanation so you can see so the total cost of buying bananas at the market is 45 times 5 plus 40 which gives 265 the total cost of buying from our neighbor is 50 times 5 which gives 250 dollars so all those students who said buy from the neighbor you are correct mundo correct all right let's look at question number three question number three is a little bit more challenging all right so but let's go there nothing is too challenging for my students question number three where's question number three all right there we go so i'm giving you a minute to take this on i know some of you go to bed well most of you you know at nine o'clock so let's see how much we can get um in tonight it says bike a travels four fifth of a one thousand meter course and bike b travels one third of an eighteen hundred meter course which bike traveled a longer distance cool ability test questions question that's a good critical thinking question all right take a minute and see if you can figure that that, that answer out question three we're working at yes i see everybody answering all right guys you have a minute or let's give you two minutes to answer question number three so we're looking at which bike travel patricia morgan russell how comes you're getting the answer so quickly I'm gonna call on you next time to actually work it out. Yeah, so Patricia is saying bike A. Wow, Kyla Sims is saying bike A. Sukin Scott is saying bike A. Michaela Henlon is saying, uh, Mr. Number for number three is D. So, hmm, number three. Um, Nikisha Murray is saying Miss bike A. Teresa Armstrong is saying bike A. Ingrid Henry is saying bike B. All right, so Nishere Jacobs is saying bike B. So we have different answers. So let's see who is gonna be correct. All right. Who is gonna be correct? Who's getting this correct? Is it bike A or is it bike B? All right, let's look at the explanation. All right, now bike A traveled four fifth times a thousand, which is 800 meters, whilst bike B traveled one third times 1800, which is 600 meters. So the answer to this question is bike A. So if you said bike A, that's correct. Bike A would have traveled a longer distance okay all right let's look at question number four now question number four is going to require some thought um we want you to look at it and it says the drawings in the box go together in a certain way which drawing goes where you see the question mark now guys i want you to look at this carefully and i'm going to give you a hint it's a rotation all right, so if you are going to be thinking critically, the first thing you're gonna do when you see a question like this is to just look, what is the question asking me? You know, just look at how the objects uh, move on the screen. So you can see that this is a rotation. All right, let me give you a minute and I want you to tell me which diagram, which drawing should go where the question mark is, okay? Let me see what you guys are saying on Facebook. You have a minute to do that. Yes, Nikisha, you got it correct, right, girl? All right, so let me see what you're, you guys are saying for this one. So Livingston is saying, oh, Livingston, so back, back is correct. Okay, we've gone past that. Yes, Nikisha, congrats, you got it correct. Yeah, right. Sharona, 
So you are saying the answer is D. Nardia Chambers is saying D. Patricia Morgan Russell is saying D. Patricia, you just bright, so everything you get right. Nikisha Murray is saying D. O'Shea Scott is saying D. So nobody else is not saying A or B or C. Okay, new comments. Um, Damon Arnold is saying D. Okay, so I mean, I see everybody saying D. So I guess you guys, you know, you're, you're on to this one. So let's see the explanation for this. Now remember, teachers, you can get these interactive books totally free. Right, as you can see, D is indeed the answer. But I want to stop a little bit and talk to you about something. Now, notice, let me put let me put the um, object on the screen. Notice something, guys. Notice what we tried to do to you. Notice how A and D looks similar. Notice that? The difference is that this top part was disconnected from A, from the, from the bottom part, and with this, it's continuous. Right. So you need to look carefully because, yes, you, you saw the rotation. Right. But even in the answer, we tried to actually to get you to think as well. OK, so if you saw that, well, everybody saw that. So that that's pretty awesome. Now, guys, if you like what I am doing, please show some love. Let me see those hearts going up on the screen. Yeah, put some hearts up on the screen because you love your ability test class. Remember what I say, COVID is not going to have anything on us. We're going to have our classes. We're going to go through our pet books. We're going to go through questions. We're going to take questions um, in the next class. So, you know, show some love if you like what we're doing on our live stream. All right, let's move on to question number four. Let's look at question. As a matter of fact, let's look at question number five. So hit the heart button for me on Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, yeah, show some love. And if you know somebody who is doing PEP, please, you know, invite them to join our live sessions. We're going to be having these sessions at 8 o'clock. And we will tell you, we'll post on Facebook the days when we're going to be having these live sessions. All right, let's look at question number five. Question number five. I want you to take a minute. Let me just zoom in. And I want you to look at question number five. It says, which word does not go with the others? Which word does not go with the others? Okay, you have blue, you have orange, you have red, you have yellow. Okay, let me see what you guys are saying. So you have blue, orange, red, yellow. All right, so Sukin says, orange, miss. Patricia, no, Patricia, if you get one more question, right? Remember, I'm going to tell you. So let me see. Um, Demetrius says A. So I guess that is blue. Are you saying blue, Demetrius? For question five. Uh, Miss Nikki Russell is Rihanna on the hill. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Rihanna. So Sukin is saying D. So I guess Sukin is saying yellow. All right, Miss, but the part show, the part disconnect and did not disconnect. Oh. Oh, you're talking about the previous question. So Patricia is saying D, Sukini is saying B, orange. Um, Megan Angus Hilton is saying orange. Uh, okay, O'Shea Scott is saying B, orange. Georgette Simone Miller is saying, S Simone Muir rather is saying orange. Georgette Foster is saying orange. Megan Angus Hilton, orange. Kim Waller, orange. Kyla Kyla, let me see who is Kyla. Kyla, Kyla, what's your last name? So Kyla, what are you saying? All right, so you guys are all saying the same thing. So Empress is saying orange as well. Andre Livingston, orange, orange, orange. Okay. Oh, Andre, I like that because you're not just saying orange. You're saying orange and you're giving an explanation. Let us stop a little bit. 
The thing with PEP, which I really love, guys, is that it makes you think. And you're not just telling an answer. You know, we want to see how you reason. So even in the explanation, you're not going to write down your reasoning but we, for the ability test. But we want to see how you're actually thinking, how you're processing stuff. How did you come up with that um, answer? So that is pretty nice. So I noticed that some of you said orange and why it is orange. So Shea Apple is saying orange because it's not a primary color. All right, let's see what the explanation says. So it says blue, red, and yellow are primary colors. Orange is a secondary color. Therefore, option B is the correct answer. And that is orange. Very good. All right. Oops, did I click something? Oh, I clicked yellow. <laughs> I'm getting it wrong. If I click red, I'm going to get it wrong. If I click blue, I'm going to get it wrong. So if I click orange, yeah, correct. So it's a go. Awesome. Let's look at another question. I like question number six. I like question six. I think you guys should spend a lot of time looking at questions like number six. Let's look at this. So I'm going to give you a minute to look at the question, but I don't just want you to tell the answer. On your Facebook, I want you to say why you're choosing this as an answer. So I want you to type the answer, but I also want you to put why you're choosing it as the answer. Okay, so go ahead, right ahead and start writing. Window is to pain as book is to. I want you to tell me what book is to and why you're saying that. So let's go. Question six, we are working now. Window is to pain as book is to. What is book to and why? Window is to pain as book is to something. What is book? What is book to? Let me see what you guys are saying. I see everybody said page. But remember, guys, you, you have to put why. Why you're saying page, not just page. Come on, my geniuses. We're not just saying page. Why is it page? So, Tamika, you have to put reason. Shay, thanks for that explanation. Um, pain is a glass, therefore page is in the book. Okay. D, because book is to novel. Hey. Page, because without page, it is not a book. Pain is a cl the class in the window. I guess you meant glass. Therefore, page is in the book. D, because book is to novel. Page. Um, Narga and Michaela, you have to tell us why. Why is it page? You can't just say page. You have to say why, why. So I see Simone, you're saying book, book is to page because pay, because windows make up a pay, make up the pain. And without the pages, there'll be no book. Okay, Ingrid, there's no book without pages. Okay. Let's see what the explanation says. Oh, Denise is saying cover because the cover holds a book. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. All right, guys. I love the way you're trying to explain. And that is important because with PEP, like I said before, one main criteria is to see how you think critically, right? Um, not just to say A, B, C, R, D, but to test your critical thinking skills. We want to see how you're reasoning, you know, reasoning. Yeah. All right. So let's look at the explanation. Let's see if I have an explanation in this interactive book. And remember, guys, we're using my um, workbook, this workbook here. So you should grab a copy because we're going to be using it throughout our online class. And for those of you who um, you can join us on Zoom, 
every single day at five o'clock we have a live zoom class the cost for the class is two thousand dollars jamaican two thousand dollars per month if you can afford it if you cannot afford it then you come for free okay so if parents who can afford to pay you pay two thousand dollars you can um whatsapp me to get more information um my whatsapp is eight seven six three five one seven 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 that's eight seven six three five one seven 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 it's scrolling on the screen now if you can afford Afford, you pay two thousand per month. If you cannot afford to pay, you send your child to the Zoom class for free, and it's every day five to six for ability test. All right, let's look at the explanation. So it says a window is made up of panes, while a book is made up of pages. So the answer is not choice A because a novel is a type of book. And let's see what else. So the novel is a type of book. It's not C because glass has no relationship to a book. Choice C is incorrect because cover is only a part of the book, right? A book is not made up of covers. So the answer is going to be D, okay? All right, now let's look at this um image uh question number seven let's look at question number seven i'm going to give you a minute to focus on question number seven to see if you can figure out what should go where the question mark is so which image is going to replace the question mark is it going to be a b c or d take a minute and try to figure that out post on facebook and tell us why you're choosing the image that you are choosing okay so we can see how you're reasoning that's what i'm interested in tonight how you're thinking why you're thinking the way you're thinking not just for you to come here and say any meaning mind more i want to hear your explanation all right. And then, guys, remember, when we do our Zoom classes and when we do these classes, I mean, you, you getting it right or wrong is not important. What is important to me is that you're learning and you're sharpening your critical thinking skills. All right. So shoot away and let me hear what you're saying. Which image replaces the question mark? Question seven, that's what we're working on. So is it going to be A, B, C or D? Okay, so she up listening because it's black and white with a dot in the middle. Um, Chevron is saying C. Patricia Morgan was is saying C D. Huh. Um, Terence class C for Charlene. Empress Mel. What are you saying for that? Um, Sharona C. Sharona C. Sharona C. Sukin Scott C. Stacy and Arthur's Miller, what are you saying, Stacy? You're saying C. Um, but Sharona, you need to put Y. Come on. C, because it goes from color and it changed to white and has a dot. Tamiqua, Georgia Gordon. Demetra says C because first is color and no dot in the next, no color and a dot. Okay. Because as you can see in the first image, it changed the color. All right. So I see where you guys are reasoning. Georgia, God, you need to put your explanation. Megan, okay. I see your reasoning. Chantal, you have to put your explanation. All right. So type your explanation. Audit Garden, not just say C. I want to hear why you're saying C. Why are you saying C? All right, guys. Remember to send some love. And remember, if you know someone who is preparing for PEP, invite them to join us on our live and also invite them to to, to join the live the zoom sessions um five o'clock mondays to fridays on zoom um our zoom link is on our facebook page so just invite them to join our zoom class it's absolutely free if you can't afford to pay the two thousand dollars all right okay let's look at the explanation i see thank you guys for participating let me see what the explanation says all right, so we have a video.
yeah that was pretty neat and i hope you guys love my animations that that was really 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 cool right i hope you guys love the way i animated um this particular question now look at this guys so you'll notice that in this image you have a colored image right and notice in the second image it's decolored and i added a dot in the center right so whatever you do on this side you're gonna have to do it on this side Thank you, Shay, for loving my animation, yes. <laughs> I tell people all the while, you know, I study technology in education, so e-learning is my thing. I really love it, yeah. And I love the fact that, you know, I can think of ways to get the explanations across, so that is pretty important to me. All right, now notice this one here. So I was saying this is colored, and this one I decolored, and then I added a dot in the center. So you're gonna to have to do the same thing over here. So you, this is colored. So the answer must be decolored. And notice I did not change the image. So it's, it's gonna to have to be the same image and you're gonna add the dot in the center. Now these are rotations. These are, you still have the same color image so it can't be that. So because this over here must be what is over here, okay? All right, so we're going to move on to question number eight. Copies to coffee. Let's see question number eight. All right, let's let's zoom that in. All right, question eight says, "Cup is to coffee as bowl is to what? Cup is to coffee as bowl is to what?" Okay, guys, take a couple of seconds and see if you can figure out what we're looking for. Cup is to coffee as bowl is to something. All right, so I see Sukin, Kim Miller. Kim Miller, you're putting up your thing. Um, <laughs> Kadeen said, soup go in bowl. Um, soup is the answer because it's something that we drink and the rest of the stuff. Ray, okay, miss soup. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not spoon, it's not dish, it's not food. Okay, Damon Arnold is saying soup. Um, yeah, so miss soup. When, no, guys, you're just so right. Wow, awesome, 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 awesome. Chevrolet, God fearing Johnson, B soup. Teresa Armstrong, Bailey D. I wonder why you said food. Um, Sharona Lewis saying soup. Hey, guys, the internet no good again. In a member, I tell you, all right. So, Dr. Ashman is just making this thing into a learning tool. Member, I tell you, no. all right. So, let's see the answer. Let's see the answer, right. Um, Vanessa, remember, you need to put your explanation. Denise Gray, you have to put your explanation. Stacey Bartley, put your explanation. Guys, remember what we're saying. We know those want the answers. We want to hear how you're thinking. We want to see how you're thinking, right? So if you say soup, tell me, tell me why. Why you're saying, why are you saying soup? All right, so let's look at the explanation. Okay, I don't want to see right or wrong. So put dish, get wrong. Um, I'm gonna choose soup, um, spoon. I'm getting it wrong. If I'm choosing food. I'm getting it wrong. So I choose soup, and I get it correct. But let's look at the explanation. It says coffee goes into a cup while soup goes into a bowl. Choices A and C are incorrect because they are you. They're other utensils. The answer is not choice D because the word food is too general. So we're talking about B, which is soup. And almost everybody got that question correct. All right, let's look at question number nine. And guys, can you believe it? We took uh, just under an hour to do the entire exercise. So we have two questions to go, and then we're going to call it a night. Question number nine. Let's see if you can figure this out quickly, because we know that your bedtime is nine o'clock. So question number nine, can you figure this out? The figures inside the square are arranged in a certain manner. Can you find the missing figure? So you notice you have this right here. Something is missing right here. And you have this over here. So what you're going to do, students, you're going to try to see if you can see the pattern. That's what you're looking for. Look at this. Look at this. So some of the things that you're going to ask yourself, did the, did the objects change, right? You know, are we having the same number of sides? same color those kind of things you're going to look at right and then now you figure out the pattern and then you can solve all right this one is not so hard so i'm not going to give you much time maybe like 30 seconds let's see what you're saying question number nine all right so we'll move on from soup 
Question nine. All right, so everybody say B, 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 B. All right, red because the color. Yes, Simone, you're the only one who got it right because you're giving me an explanation. Yes, Georgia, you get it right. Yeah, mm hmm. Teresa, yes. Everybody who said B alone, Kim Walla, I'm not giving it to you, right? Because you need to put an explanation. So you have to tell me why, Chinese. I'm not going to tell you that. Yes, because you need to put an explanation. Nikisha Murray, explanation is missing. All right. Okay, let's see. Let's see what's going on with the explanation. I think I have done another animation here. Guys, I want you to pay attention to the animation, right? So I want you to see because if I tell you that this is my option, I'm actually going to animate and show you why. Okay, so pay some attention to this for me, guys. Um, Very nice. Now, guys, you notice something in that particular um, question. Notice what holds. Shape is the same. I didn't change the shapes. They're blue and they have one, two, three, four, five. So they're pentagons, right? Five um, sides and they're blue right here. Over here, they're all green, same, same shape, same size, same, same everything. The only thing that's changing is the color. So I noticed most of you said that. So of course, if that's the only thing that's changing, then I mean, right here, we're missing a red, all right? And the animation tells us that. All right, so the last question now is a quantitative reasoning question. And it says, what is 4 times 63 divided by 3? Let's see if we can pull this up on the screen. That's our last question for today. What is 4 times 63 divided by 3? Let's see if you can get that, guys. Put number 20, 10, last question. Send up some love. We only have, come on, guys. You have 75 people on the live. We want you to send up some love. And remember now, when we come on at 8 o'clock, we want you to tell all your friends that we're having a live, we're doing the ability test, and we're gonna also be doing the social studies curriculum based test preparation and performance tasks. So, you know, just tell your friends that, hey, listen, if mommy's on Facebook, just put us on for an hour because you're gonna have live classes with Dr. Ashman. All right, so what's the answer for question number 10? So question number 10, so question number 10, I want to zoom in so you can see it properly. It says, what is 4 times 63 divided by 3? 4 times 63 divided by 3. I'm looking for the answers now. So, okay. So that person is saying, Nardia is saying 84. Charling, I don't know what you're saying. And I see you working it out, Megan, Angus, and you're getting 84. I'm um, Kyla Simpson, 4 times 63 equal that, divided by 3 equal 84. Simone Muir is saying 84. Chinese Ford is saying 84. Okay, so everybody's stuck on 84. Let's see. Kim Waller, um, you're saying, hmm, can I work it out, Kim? Georgia Garden, Demetrius says A because 63 divided by 3 equals 21, 21, okay, equals 84. All right, Sharon Bartlett, mm -hmm. all right. Okay, thank you, guys. All right, it's 9.08, so let's um, see quickly. Yes, Damien Arnold. <laughs> yes, we're going to be having some really hard questions. We're just warming up, so don't worry, um, Andre Livingston. Don't worry, you're going to be getting some questions that's going to challenge you on our next um live. We're going to be working some questions from our quantitative reasoning. Now, notice you'll notice, Andre, that the um the ability test is comprised of verbal reasoning as well as quantitative reasoning. But in this particular workbook, I use a number of strategies to, to, to develop and sharpen 
critical thinking skills. In the quantitative reasoning book that I have out on the market, it's six hundred and fifty dollars. It's uh, pep practice for grades four, five, and six students. That book only focuses on quantitative reasoning, and the questions are really challenging. So that's a good book to get. That's a good six hundred and fifty dollars. You can get that book at Kingston Bookshop. This is the book I'm talking about. You can get it at Kingston Bookshop. You can get it at Sansa's. You can get it at Brian's. Um, this particular book that we're working from tonight, we're using a number of strategies to help you to develop your critical thinking skills. All right, so question number 10, let's see what's the answer for that one. What is four times 63 divided by three? So the answer is 84. Explanation, the expression in numerical term is written as four times 63 divided by three. When solved, the result is 84. Hence, the correct answer is all right, guys, let me just thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, it was a pleasure going through exercise one in our um, pep practice workbook. Now, on our next live, I want to do another live on Thursday at 8 p.m. We're going to be going through some of our quantitative reasoning questions. Now, if you can, grab a copy of this workbook at Kingston Bookshop, Brian's Bookstore, Sansa's, all the major bookstores um, in Jamaica. It's $650. So we're going to be working some questions from this workbook. And we're going to be having our live for an hour. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you again in my next video. Goodbye.